Hey, this is Chrono AB and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this loot system script in which you can put as many objects as you want. And every element of that object will have an item where you can drag and drop an item like this and spawn rate where you can give spawn rate and according to that spawn rate, that item gets spawned. Right now, I only have four items. That's why I have already set it up and I have given the first item, the light bulb. 80% chance of spawning. The second, I have given 10% chance of spawning and the third and the fourth, I have given 5% chance of spawning. So when I hit play, what happens is, and when I hit the E key, it spawns an object, all right? So when I hit play and hit E key, so what happens is majority of the time it spawns the light bulb and some of the time it spawns other stuff. So you can use it to make some kind of a loot system or loot box system in your game. So let me show you how this script is made. So the concept is that we will first of all make our own class, which will have a game object where you can drag and drop the game objects. And it will have spawn rate where you can put the spawn rate of an object, just like here. We can drag and drop and put a spawn rate. But it will also have two more things called minimum spawn probability. I'm just going to call it minimum value and maximum spawn probability value, which I'm just going to call maximum value, which I have hidden in the inspector so that you don't see it in the inspector, but it is there. And we will only use this inside the script and we will set up the value inside the script so we don't need it to be in the inspector. So. After making this script, we will call it as an array so that we can put more than one object and every object will have a game object, spawn rate, minimum and maximum value, like here. So let's say we have four different objects, which has spawn rate of 40, 30, 20 and 10. By the way, the total spawn rate should always be 100. If you just count total of all of this, it should always be 100. Otherwise, if it goes over 100 or less than 100, maybe one of these objects may not get spawned. So that will be the problem. So just keep it exactly equal to 100. So after saying that, we made our own class and then called it as an array so that every object has every element of that array has a game object spawn rate minimum and maximum value then we will set up this minimum and maximum value according to our spawn rate by just using a loop system which will go through all of these objects and just put in the minimum and maximum value so let's say we we go through the first item what will happen is first items minimum value will be zero and its maximum value will be its minimum value plus its spawn rate minus one, which gives us 39. Now, why I wrote 39 here, because why I did a minus one is that if you actually count from zero to 39, that is actually 40 different numbers. So from zero to 99, that means out of 100 different numbers, we gave 40 different numbers to the first element. We give 40 different numbers, which is the spawn rate. So for the next item after that, what will happen is it's minimum spawn rate will be the previous items maximum spawn rate meaning 39 in our case plus one so that's why it starts from 40 and then its maximum spawn rate will be its own minimum spawn rate plus its own spawn rate minus one and the reason i did minus one is that because if you count from 40 to 69 there are 30 different numbers so the remaining 30 different numbers we gave it to the second item so similarly what is going to happen is that the third item will start from 70 because 69 plus 1 and will end at 89 because 70 plus 20 makes it 90 and minus 1 gives us 89 so the fourth item what's going to happen is that it's minimum will start from 90 and plus we'll do a plus 10 which gives us 100 minus 1 which will be 99 so in turn we gave out of 100 different digit we gave 40 different digit to the first item 30 to the second item 20 to the third item and 10 to the fourth item just according to its spawn rate after that what we will do is we will just tell computer to just give us a random number from 0 to 99 give us a random number between 0 to 99 and then what's going to happen is that we will check is that random number within the range of 0 to 39 if it is then we will spawn the first item if it's not then the loop will continue and go to the second item we'll again check 
if the random number is between 40 to 69. If it is, then it will spawn the second item, otherwise it will go to the third item and check. Is the random number we have chosen between the range of 70 to 89, which will be the third item. If it is, then it will be the third item, otherwise it will go to the fourth item. Again, it will check that if it is between 90 and 99. And in our case, it will be because it's the fourth item and it's the last item. So it will spawn the fourth item. So now according to that kind of a technique, we will spawn an object. And if you think about it, out of 100 different digit, there is a 40% chance that that random number will land between a range of 0 and 39. There's a 30% chance that it will land between 40 and 69. 20% chance that it will land between 70 and 89 and 10% chance that it will land between 90 and 99. And that is the core concept of this script. Now I'll show you the script. You can just download it from the link in the description or I'll show you the whole script and you can just copy it and use that script as you like. So with this concept gone, now let's go to the script. Now this is the script that does all of those things. So here, what we have done is, as I said before, first of all, we made our own class called item to spawn, where we have a game object called item and a spawn rate called a float called spawn rate, just like in our script. An element has a item where you can drag and drop item, game object, and a spawn rate where you can give a spawn rate. Then we have two more things, which is hidden and not shown in the inspector, as I said before, two more things that is hidden, right? Because we are only going to use it here and then here. Then once we made that, we made a reference to this item to spawn here and made it an array so that every element of that array will have this game object where you can drag and drop game object and this spawn rate float. And as you can see, every element of that array has those things. Now we made a for loop that goes through all of these item to spawn array element. It goes through all of the item to spawn array element and then checks if it is the first item or not. If it is the first item, then its minimum value will be zero and its maximum value will be its spawn rate value minus one. Once we have done everything for the first item, once the first item is done, then every other item, what's gonna happen is that every other item's minimum spawn probability will be the previous item's maximum spawn prob probability plus one, just like here. As you know, the second item had first item's max spawn probability plus one, third had a second item's max spawn probability plus one, the fourth had third's max spawn probability plus one. And then all of its max spawn probability will be its own minimum spawn probability plus its own spawn rate minus one which was for all of them. As you know, 69 is just 40 plus 30 minus one. 89 is just 70 plus 20 minus one. 99 is just 90 plus 10 minus one. Just exactly like we did this. So once we do this, now there is another function that does this part, which checks, which gives us a random value and checks through all of this. Once everything is assigned, we go to this script and in this script, first of all, we choose a random number from zero to 100, meaning in c -sharp, what it does is if you choose a value from zero to 100, it will only choose a value from zero to 99, not 100. So just like here, we have chosen from zero to 100. In here, we write it like that. Then it will again, we will have a for loop that goes through all of these items or elements from the item to spawn length and check if that random number is within the range of the first item, right? Within the range of the first item's minimum and maximum spawn probability, it will just check that. If no, the loop will continue and it will do the same thing for the second and the third and the fourth time. Or if it is true, meaning both of these criteria are met, then it will just instantiate that element's game object meaning if it is the first element it will spawn light bulb second element coin third element diamond and fourth element the hexagon it'll just spawn those items now to show you that these both of these functions work or not let me first of all do make a comment so that we can show the minimum and maximum getting assigned right from this and 
Let me show you which random number it's actually giving and what kind of an object we're spawning according to that random number so that I can show you that this works as well. So let's just write a debug.log debug.log and inside here let's give the random number plus uh, let's make a space plus and now we will just write this meaning item to spawn i whichever item we are going to spawn right and we'll tell the computer to give its name once we do that let's go back to unity and as you can see, you can see minimum and maximum for all of this. Now, when I hit play, what's going to happen is, so first of all, as you can see, there is 80. So the first one was 0 to 79. There is 10. So the second one was 80 to 89. 5, it went from 90 to 94. And another 5, so 95 to 99. If I change this value, then this assigned value will also get changed. So now let's go to the console, let's clear everything up. And now when I press the E key, it gave us a random value of 78 and which is inside the range of 0 and 79, we got light bulb. Let's do that again. 25, which is inside 0 and 79, so light bulb. Again, 36, again, light bulb. Let me just find, ooh, good, good, good. 98 it's not within the range of first item so the loop went again it is not within the range of this as well so the loop went once more it is not within the range of this as well so finally the loop went to the last one and it is within this range because 98 is between the value of 95 and 99 so it spawned a hexagon again 92 is within this range so it spawned the diamond so now as you can see we have given it 80% so it spawns that most of the time and everything is great. Now let me just give you the whole code right. If you don't want to download it I'm just going to give you the whole code like this. I hope you can see this. Oh my god you can you won't be able to see this. Wait, let me just make it like this. All right. I hope you can see this. If you can let me just do this. All right. This is the first part. Wait, let's do this. All right. So this is the first part till our start function. Copy this. And after that, oh, by the way, just don't make it like this. Press control shift and slash. All right. So that we have to hide it. We don't want to show it in the inspector. We don't care. Let me just remove this as well. Or I'll just have it in the description. We'll just download it in the description so this is the first part and after that i have the second part i'll tell you you don't need to do this i just did this for demonstration purposes so that you can see how the spawning system works but you don't need this you just need to call it once here in the start function and it will just spawn an item according to the assignment value got it so the second portion is this you just need to write this spawner script and everything is done so I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. And again, thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.